Okay, so um, there is going to be a little bit of um, covering of ground that's been covered already, um, but I'm going to do that very, very quickly. Um, but I think it tries to set the scene for what we do. The presentation that we put together today enables us to talk about the sorts of things we do, um, and more important, how we go about doing them. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, the work that we do at Nottingham Trade University, which is a response to the needs of the field uh, from the point of view of employers, uh, graduate recruiters, um, the sector, um, our own powers that be in terms of the policies that we have, uh, the learners, uh, students, and their expectations of what they want to achieve by the end of the course. And um, third apology, you can count these if you want to as we go through. Ours is a three-year course, but it's not a normal three-year course. Um, so we're going to start off with why. Um, we're then going to look at... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. This is why Antonia's here, so she can prompt me to say who I am and who Antonia is. Um, I'm Richard Howarth. I'm the course leader for the Business Management in Company course at Nottingham Trent University. Hi, and I'm Antonia, Antonia Jengi. I'm the co-course leader for the program, and I also uh, lead the part-time HR program routes. Um, and our presentation, in some ways, can be seen to be about how we are going about closing this gap between um, certainly business education and the needs of employers. Uh, and the learners themselves. So we're going to talk about a little bit about what our work is, uh, our in-company work specifically, and that ranges from um, our in-company course that we look after to, um, more recently, our Chartered Manager Degree course, which is now up and running and recruiting and has their first cohort halfway through their first year, and will be soon recruiting their next cohort of students. Um, I think, but hopefully more interestingly for you, how we go about doing this. So. Uh, picking up on some of the things that have been saying earlier on about the, the learning approach that we take, how we engage the students in what they are doing in the workplace, but also how that connects to the assessments and assignments that we actually have. So there isn't a disconnect between I'm now working over here and now I'm a student over there. There is an integration between those two things. Um, and possibly some of the challenges we've had as well in doing that, which resonate quite nicely earlier on with the this idea about troublesome uh, things and how if you do your uh, module evaluation forms at the wrong time, you can get the wrong outcome, possibly. I'm going to return to why at the end just to show some of the things that we're getting out of this in terms of our student satisfaction, employability rates, um, and some of the benefits of the organizations that we're working with as well. And a couple of comments on what next and the opportunity to have some questions. Um, so the start of it is this idea about closing the gap. Um, I think we've seen already there's plenty of uh, evidence to suggest that there are a number of graduate roles out there. Um, there is this leveling off this year, but over the past few years there has been, you know, there have been many graduate roles out there available, but there have been many of those roles which are unfilled. Uh, and there is a general comment that the sorts of things that graduates have are not the sorts of things necessary that employers are looking for. So they don't have the right sorts of skills, competences, they don't necessarily have the right attitudes, um, and they um, are struggling to secure that role, which is what they are looking for when they come to university in the first place, because that's the outcome that they actually uh, want. Um, to underpin, you know, as I say, there are plenty of roles out there, um, and um, Broadly speaking, what we've seen, and we've been doing this work for quite some time, the in-company course has been running since 1998, uh, so it's not something that's new. We've got quite a lot of experience in running this sort of program, but we have seen a shift and change over time um, in the course and what we pay attention to, but also how uh, we attend to the outcomes and needs at the, same, at the same time of making sure that we're not being accused of dumbing things down, which is often the case, and, and then maintaining the sort of the, the standards that we actually have, and, and the fact that this is a higher education course within a university, and we need to actually produce people who are graduates and deserve to be graduates um, of a, that type of course. Um, so we have seen this transition. 1998, when we first launched the course, um, we were very, very much responding to this need for softer skills, transferable skills, as well as more traditional thinking-based skills uh, that we would have seen prior to that. So trying to integrate those into the course. And then two years ago, 
no, three, three years, ago, years ago, we did a complete refresh of the course to see how we would go about actually addressing those and actually how we um, try and think about really um, the outcomes of the course and how we work back through the course in terms of the course structure, the themes within the course, um, and how we pay attention to different ways of thinking about knowledge. Um, and we took the view that what we wanted to do was to focus on uh, know-how uh, rather than know what, know why. Um, and what that therefore meant for course design, what that meant for our overall course model, and how we then modeled what was going on within each of the individual modules themselves and the sorts of experiences that students were having and the sorts of things that we were looking for them to be able to make sense of uh, and articulate through the assignments that they were actually doing. Uh, thereby trying to recognize that knowledge is produced, it's not just conceptual and transferred in a normal classroom environment. The reason we did that was because the distinctiveness of our course comes through the fact that our students are in work um, for at least one year of the three-year course, and um, many of them are actually in work for two years, the second and third year. So all of our students are in company second year, and many of them are in the company for the final year as well. Always me as well. Um, so that, now it's the comment on the sector. I think, we, again, we've heard a number of the pieces in here been picked up. There is a lot of uncertainty, a lot of change going on, how we are being measured, how we are being assessed, the sorts of things that the learners themselves are looking for when they come, and how we're doing, what, both in terms of employability, student satisfaction survey, um, what responses we're getting to that. But also, I think, I think importantly, and what we'll come to next when Antonio looks a little bit at who our learners are, is the, the expectations and what we really mean when we talk about employability. Um, and things like, you know, the number of graduates in employment within six months, okay, that's good, and we get a pretty good outcome there. The number of students who are in graduate roles, we do quite well there, but that to me is not employability. That is just a very hard, you know, and quick measure of where somebody is at a particular point in time. It's not necessarily going to be there to um, ensure that they are able to um, progress lifelong in their learning, in their careers and their roles. And it's not necessarily going to take into account, as Dave Poole and Sewell talk about, do they actually enjoy what they do? Which is really, really important for, for Generation Y. Um, and that sort of uh, notion of the remuneration, what they get from a role and what they get is wider than just the salary package as well. So how do we actually embed and how do we think, include that sort of those ideas and thinking within what it is that we do when we already have a very crammed curriculum. Okay. I suspect all of us have probably either said or at least heard our parents, grandparents saying, oh, it wasn't like that in our day. And I think one of the things that we're very conscious of with the current Generation Y, with the 18, 19-year-olds coming in, there is a reality. When they come in every year, they are 18 every year. It's us that are getting older, one year at a time, or one day at a time. So one of the things that, and it picks up on some of the things that were being said this morning, if we're going to be successful with enabling the, our learners to go into the workplace in a more effective manner, then one of the things that we have to do is also be aware of our own positions, our own abilities, our own skills, and our abilities to enable those learners to achieve what they want to achieve, which actually requires us to also change at the same time. One of the things that um, we try and do with the programme very carefully is to create a partnership arrangement between ourselves, the learners, and the employers that our learners go into. So there is a very, very strong commitment to a tri-party partnership. That does actually mean that we have to get to know what the employers want, but we also have to get to know what the learners want as well. So that what we try and do is then enable them, enable them through the program to actually achieve their aspirations and also possibly to get to learn them as they travel along that journey. Part of that transition for us as the teaching staff has been captured for Nottingham Trent recently 
by being awarded AACSB. Thank you. Um, which still fools us with what the letters stand for, um, but effectively it's an American accreditation of international business schools. And we've recently been awarded that in August. Part of that requires um, a clear understanding of the role of the academic, whether they are a scholarly academic, a researcher, or there is also a strong profile on the practitioner. So the practitioner, as well as the academic functions, work together on our programme to enable the learners to blend the academic perspective and, let's call it, the work-based perspective. So, what does our programme actually look like? Well, it, start, it looks like this. Do you want to take us through that? Mm. Oh. Um, I've said already that our courses are three years in, in length. We've been doing this since 1998, and there's a, it, there's a different pattern as depend, depending on which course it is and um, whether the learner is recruited straight to the business. So our CMDA, which is more recent, is actually based on the back of what was originally there, which is called the BA Management and Leadership. Those learners actually are recruited straight to the business from the start of the programme. They don't come through UCAS, um, although in the potential, in the, potentially in the future they will. Um, and it's down to the crew company to recruit them into the organisation, and then they spend all three years in the organisation. Essentially, they are employee from the beginning, whereas on the course that I look at, the business management and company, they are a student to start off with. They come through UCAS, although they have chosen to study our course. They have to be interviewed to get onto the course, um, and we align what we're looking for in that interview with the sorts of things that the employees and partners are looking for as well. We don't guarantee that they'll be able to get a role, but we certainly support them through that first year, whether they're on the one-year in company or the two-year course, in order to be able to achieve the outcome that we're looking for them to achieve academically in the first year, which supports what happens in the second year, um, but also achieve the outcome that they will need um, uh, in terms of securing a role for, the, for at least the second year uh, to then either return to the university in the final year, because those learners may want to have that more traditional experience in the final year, um, or to actually remain in the organization for a second year. If you think about the sort of uh, roles that they can be undertaking, they are many and varied. Ours is a generic business management course. So we've got uh, partnerships with all different sorts of organizations, Rolls-Royce, Toyota, uh, Germain's, or a specialist scene manufacturer. We've got some smaller organizations. We've got, you know, who, who, you know, new name it. We've also had uh, students in the past who've set up their own businesses and actually undertaken the course as the in-company period running their own business as well. So there's flexibility there in terms of the sorts of things that we're actually asking them to do. There is a, an overall idea and a logic about the design, which I'll talk about in a minute. But essentially, we're trying to, um, through the structure that we have, um, deliver the experience which is meaningful to the learner and that they can make sense of the meaning of that experience as related to their skill development, but also as related to their career journey and also related to the subject they're actually studying, which is business. So I've said already, um, the focus that we have is on know-how. Um, it is something that's been called for. Um, Professor Binks from Southern University of Nottingham um, the University of Nottingham has talked recently quite a bit about this and how at the moment we, we're potentially focusing too much on what, why and not sufficiently on more practical know-how uh, within uh, our courses. Now, I have to say that it hasn't been an easy ride and it still is not an easy ride to uh, do something like this because um, potentially what we're doing is we're um, challenging the dominant logic of what our school is set up, on, set up upon, as in a delivery module model which focuses on subject, content, conceptual knowledge, and not necessarily knowledge as it is produced. Um, now, that is a real challenge. It's a challenge when we came through the AACSB approach. It, it was a challenge when we came to the revalidation approach to the course because we were trying to articulate our learning outcomes in a different way to what was seen to be the standard way in which we should be doing this. And that is a, uh, you know, is a real, um, despite the need out there in the marketplace and the desire for 
a course which delivers more meaningful outcomes to learners, it is a real tension and it is a real challenge for us when we actually uh, go about designing it. It's also a challenge when we go about trying to deliver it because and, uh, we have a relatively small team of people who work on the course because we have a recruitment approach, although we have a blend of different academic staff, which brings people in with PhDs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, into publications, which is great, but they're not necessarily always the, the, going to be the sorts of tutors who are passionate and are interested in about the detail of what's going on in a particular the workplace and how you know you can solve practical problems through the assignment rather than writing about the theory and abstract from the practice and so there's a couple of things in there um but the the course is there and it's it is running and we are achieving some really strong outcomes by actually trying to think about and having thought about how we go about doing things differently and how we enable our learners to make sense of what's actually happening in the workplace in order to be able to develop their understanding of themselves, but also their understanding of the organization in which they're working for. I'll talk about a couple of examples. We'll talk specifically about a couple of examples as we go forward in a minute. Um, this is our overall uh, sort of horizontal and vertical design for the course. Um, the red bits that go to the middle are practical modules that we have. All our modules are applied uh, to the organization that learners are working within when they are in second year and then potentially also in third year. Uh, the purple bits along the bottom are the leading, you know, the learning and practice modules. And then the bits along the top are the more traditional sort of content subject based modules. So if I just quickly talk you through how we go, have gone about doing this. So we've got a logic to Year one, year two, year three. You'd expect that anyway. We've got different outcomes for those years as well. First year is very much about focusing on the individual. So who you are as an individual, where have you come from, and where are you seeking to go to? For us, that's really important because where they're seeking to go to in year two is a job somewhere, um, and not just any old job. Hopefully, it will be a job that they actually want to do and will sustain them until they get to the end of the course. Um, that filters through into uh, work that we do with the learners around how they build their CVs and how they articulate what it is they're interested in, why it is that that role in that particular organization resonates with them and not another organization. And that hopefully will enable them to actually be more successful in their job searching as well. It's also looking individually at things like functions in a business. Um, so human resourcing, although we don't call it that. Um, we've also got things in there about uh, marketing. We've also got finance and all the traditional sorts of things you'd expect to see in a business degree. The thing we have in the red, which is learning through experiences, we also have a module which is called the reality of enterprise and business. Um, arguably, the challenge we have there is that what is the reality of that business? Well, the reality is what sense the learner makes of it, you could say. Um, what it's based on is a series of challenges they get involved in, one of which is the Institute Director's £10 challenge, where they have to turn around a profit on an investment of £10 in the space of about four weeks. It's a really quick and dirty way for them to get to think about value and this idea about the commercial awareness. What is it that we are doing which is of value and how are we going about producing that? After that, through a transition we have in the early January period, we then look at getting them into pathway groups and they actually run projects then these are the sorts of things that historically have led into or have had the possibility to lead into a company that's been generated as a result of it now those have progressed in the last few years from what we used to have which would be more traditional business enterprise type projects where they did some nice printed t-shirts and mugs and sold them to their friends which was not actually a challenge at all to be honest um, so these are trying to get them to the learners to be more creative, more uh, innovative in what they're thinking about and how they are uh, producing something that which is going to be of value. They don't always get to the point where they actually get that, this out into the marketplace, but they have done all the thinking, a lot of thinking around how they would actually go about doing that and have had some experience of the pitfalls and the highs and lows of those sorts of things as well. And that realization that things don't always go the way you thought they were going to go. So it's a real useful experience in the first year because that does set them up for what comes next in the second year. Second year is about um, collaborating and connecting. Connecting from the point of view of theory because organizations are connected. They don't sit in silos necessarily. And all the stuff they've done on human resourcing and finance all comes together through um, what we would say and is 
out there, this notion of the business model and how you would go about describing the business model of the organization. So year two, all of the learners in an organization, they have to, by the end of that year, through the modules they've actually done, understand that organization and how it fits together. And, and, and that the assignments are designed around them building an understanding of the organization and its organization and how it's how it is managed and the process of managing um, as related to their understanding of the business model and the strategy and direction of that organization which sets them up for the final year in there also there is a chunk of work on um, career planning action planning you know now I'm in this organization I thought I was going to be doing that at the back end of the first year what am I actually going to be doing this organization how does what I'm doing fit with Toyota's competencies framework where am I in the structure what is it that I'm actually going to be doing and by the way I'm doing this job here but some of the people over there doing another job over there me doing a good job isn't just me sitting here doing this job it's me understanding everybody else around me that connects to that deeper understanding of the organization, but it also helps me understand how I collaborate, connect, communicate, and those sorts of things. And two core things we pick up on there, um, to steal Antonio Thunder here, is um, um, empathy and rapport. Now, we don't want the learners to have more empathy and more rapport, um, because that leads to madness. Uh, we want them to understand what it means to be empathetic, what it means in a collaborative working environment to have empathy with somebody, and the how does that enable you to get the job done? Yeah, as defined by the organization, as defined by you. You know, how does it, you know, does it get in the way? You know, what is this thing called rapport? Is it all happy and everybody's, you know, really nice and we all have great rapport? Or is it the times you have to say, no, I'm not doing it. I've got that to do, sorry, off you go. And you have a pretty straightforward conversation with a colleague who you empathize with, but at that point in time, you're not all smiley and happy is this vision of rapport. You actually understand rapport in a maybe a slightly different way. So it's trying to understand that collaboration and connectedness in there. Final year, uh, connecting and leading, understand the organization year two. Year three is about, okay, now we're gonna change things and say, what happens if you put that organization in a different context? So year three starts, which is a nice thing for us, we go on a study tour to Madrid and we'll work with ESIC Business School there and trying to look at how context influences the organization from a strategy point of view and how thinking about that and how challenging the way in which we think about the organization, that organization or organizations in general helps us to actually understand business and strategy in a more realistic and a more meaningful way. Uh, so they do things like more traditional sort of dissertations, those sorts of things as well. And then the final part of that is the module which is about growth, career, where next for me? Where next? Where do I see myself going? Where am I currently? Where do I see myself, you know, at the end of the course and beyond that as necessary? One of the things that we hoped with this slide would stand out is the horizontal and vertical integration of the program. The total aim is to move away from silo teaching to make sure that there is an integration with everything that is taught the academics actually talk to each other so that, that we find out what's actually happening in another module so that we can make those links and make the integration across the modules. That's really important. And alongside all of the academic content, the business content, the, the reality that we're getting them to engage with, we are building the skills, the ability and the knowledge. But we're also building things that it's interesting, Steve, I think you said you work with Ernst, Ernst Young? Um, I was reading an article quite a number of years ago that said that they were moving away in their recruitment approaches away from pure skills, etc., towards um, aptitudes and behaviours. And one of the things that we're trying to get through this program is the development of the aptitude and behaviour um, that employers are seeking the moment the students hit the ground um, in the workplace. I'm not going to do the next slide because I'm noticing it's quarter to 10 to 1. That's one that was right. Um, essentially, because we like doing these sorts of things as academics, we, drew, we, we built a model as to how the course was informed because that helped us articulate the design that we actually had um, and also helped us articulate to colleagues how we saw this actually coming about um, 
a quick comment on there is that we, rather than start on the left-hand side with a theory, we start on the right-hand side because our distinctiveness comes through the experience and the experiences that students have, and therefore the doing of the stuff is what is important. That doesn't mean there's no theory in our course, which actually at times the students think there is no theory in our course. It's that we're trying to actually say we will use theory and you can use theory as long as you, well, because you have to, um, but we want to know how useful it is. We don't want you to understand it just from the point of understanding it. We want to know whether it's useful or not in doing the things that you're being asked to do. Um, and that is a real, as I say, it's a bit of a challenge, that is. But actually, it's underpinned by skills of inquiry, skills of researching. Um, and it's also informed by modeling from the point of view of trying to make what is potentially tacit more explicit to explain the process of how this is actually happening in the organization and what is being used to evidence support your understanding of why it's happening like that in this particular organization. So why does the HR policy in that organization work like that when actually over somewhere else in a different organization, it doesn't actually work in the same way. And the opportunity when we get the students together, which we do, for discussing and debating that and seeing and, and, and playing around with some of these differences. Um, this is a very quick insight to one of the modules that I look after, which is the problem analysis module. Problem solving skills are one of the skills I think that are seen to be in deficit, but actually a skill area where uh, employers think there should be more uh, ability. Um, what I've done with this module is moved it away from where it was, and I say this is an ongoing process of improvement and change. Um, we've moved this away from a module which was more traditionally uh, based upon what you knew about problem solving, you know, and why to do it, to understanding, and given this is a year two module, to actually look at a problem in an organization, have a client and a sponsor for that, and to work with that client and sponsor on a real business problem, not to um, say, this is how I would go about doing it, but this is how I have done it, and this is what was useful, and this is what I would do next time. So it's about being able to argue for the approach that was taken, what was taken from that, what would happen next time, as well as at the same time actually providing a solution to the problem itself. So there's a real nice payback for the company, but actually there's also a real benefit to the student because they get more meaningful insight and understanding of the different tools that are available to them to problem solve. So rather than saying you need problem solving skills, you say, well, I actually have got some problem solving skills. I know how to go about doing it and maybe some of the tools and techniques I could use and how they might apply in that situation, but they wouldn't necessarily apply in a different situation. So deeper, a richer insight and understanding. So how do we put some of this into action in alongside the things that Richard's been talking about? My own background is um, as a HR practitioner. And one of the things that struck me when I went, when I joined Richard on the program, was the need to get our learners to engage with the fact that in year two, they are going to be employees. In fact, the students that go on to the two-year program, that is to say, those that spend two years in company, they are employed. They actually have an employment contract with the organization. So we actually work with them from the first year and effectively call them trainee employees because we're trying to get them ready for the transition into year two. How do we do that? Well, obviously, some of the things Richard's already picked up, um, but we even focus down to looking at some things that are pretty difficult sometimes to manage for academics, and that's punctuality and attendance. You know, a nine o'clock lecture on a Monday morning is hardly where students want to turn up on time. But the reality is at work, they have to turn up on time. In fact, they, have, they should be turning up at five to nine, not at five past. So a lot of our philosophy and our approach is very much about treating them like trainee employees. And we're taking that further um, in actually agreeing effectively a learner contract with them um, in the first year. And we are again, taking that further where we're introducing effectively an appraisal system. Now, you can imagine how difficult that can be um, because you know, what do we do with students who don't turn up? You know, I've, I've had the experience, the sad experience of uh, dismissing people who don't turn up. Not as easy to do that with students and not necessarily what we want to do. So it's striking that balance 
but trying to develop the responsible attitude of getting into the workplace um, so that they do realize, as I've said, um, that it's a five to nine start and not a five past. And interestingly, one of the additional things we do with our learners, we visit them on site. When they go out into business, we actually visit them. And in one of the visits that Richard and I did to a young lad at, at Rolls-Royce, my question to him was after six weeks, okay, what's the, what's the key thing that you've actually learned in the first six weeks that you've been here? And his answer was getting up on time. At the end of the day, it's better that they learn it while they're on our program than actually when they get into employment and find themselves dismissed in the first year, which does happen. So we are very much focusing on their approach as being employees, because effectively that's what they are. Um, just quickly wrapping it up now, in terms of the outcomes, um, we have listed up there, you know, we consistently over the last five plus years, we have a 100% employability, and you think, well, of course, you should do. Many of our employers um, and students actually on the two-year program will con will, are, are working with us in partnership. Um, we often are helping them to recruit into hard-to-fill roles um, because, believe it or not, many students when they come to university don't really know they're going to go and work in supply chain or purchase. They don't even know what that is necessary or what it entails. So it's partly of actually working with employers to be able to fill roles that maybe they were challenged uh, in filling anyway. So there is a potential for progression beyond the course within the same organization. There's not always a commitment, and that path isn't always necessary as clear, but there more often than not is an opportunity to stay with the same organization. I would say that in recent years that's changed. We've got about 60% retention rate for those on the Babin Business Management Company, two-year in company course, staying with the employers that actually recruit them at the start of the second year. Um, and with a number of the students on the one year in company route go back to the people they were working with on their placement year because often there's this intention for that they, they will return. Um, some of these things are very, very good from us from the point of view of uh, the graduate prospects. Uh, but taking into account earlier on, I did say that, you know, graduate prospects, you know, although we are 90% plus in terms of professional roles uh, or management roles within, uh, graduate roles within six months, um, that is in many ways, it's, 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 it's a good measure of how well we are actually doing in terms of the progression. And here's one of our, I think it's the highest uh, GP rate within our uh, business school. Um, but key for us is actually the, the data we actually have on our students as they graduate and they move on in those roles as well. And they are moving on much quicker than their peers are. Um, partly, okay, because they've had two years experience before they've even graduated. Um, but we would also say, and I would certainly say now with more confidence, it's because of the way in which we have designed things and what we actually get them involved in. That's what enables them to move on as well. And we actually have alumni data that actually reinforces that is the case as well. Um, we also have a pretty good partner retention. We have a relatively small pool of uh, organizations uh, and we have very good relationships with them. And their input is really important to the ongoing development of the course. Uh, and their um, feedback, uh, which we get annually at least, um, but every single time we go and visit them, um, it does inform the changes that we've ha made, the larger changes, but also some of the smaller tweaks as well. Um, in terms of the outcomes, I've listed in NSS in there as well, because they keep inviting me to meals to say well done, um, because over the last few years, we, um, I think we dropped down below 90% satisfaction for one year, but that was... Um, identifiable as to why that was the case. So we get some really, really good NSS satisfaction outcomes, which going back to the marketplace we're operating in is actually appealing. You know, we get good satisfaction rates. We also get good employability rates. So straight away, we've got a nice draw to uh, the uh, potential application pool out there. But at the end of the day, we still are looking for the people who are not necessarily after what the course used to be advertised as a sponsored course, uh, that some, somebody who's really interested in learning through doing and not necessarily a more traditional experience. Helps us with our profile. It helps with things like our external accreditations. And um, it also helps us with our recognition with our professional bodies as well. And I 
I made a mention earlier on, I think on the slide, but I didn't pick it up, that we, our courses are accredited by or recognized by the Charter Management Institute, but they're recognized at level seven uh, diploma level. So our students who've done the two year in company course only do one more year to become a chartered manager uh, from that. So it's actually in many ways, what they're doing is picking up the sorts of experiences that students are having, the work they're actually doing and what they're actually offering by way of insight and saying, that actually you're operating at potentially a higher level than your course necessarily would otherwise signify. And that feedback we get from the external examiners and also the professional bodies themselves. So we have a pretty good working relationship with them. The final slide really is to say that there are going to be challenges. As I've mentioned already, we've got a CMDA, a Charter Manager degree, apprenticeship ourselves. That will be a, an ongoing challenge, certainly as the, the apprenticeships as we expect will be advertised through UCAS as well. And there is then going to be a, an increasing differentiation um, needing to be made between what we're doing and also what's been done on those courses. But then, you know, we still do offer an aspect of more traditional university experience. Um, we have some trouble tracking what happens to our learners beyond five years. Um, we have a pretty good relationship with them to the five year point, And we know about some, you know, graduates who graduated back in 2001. Um, where they are and what they're doing and they're in pretty good roles and they're on our alumni database and they do come back now and again and actually uh, talk to our students. But for me, I think that would be more useful to be able to stand here and evidence to you the longer term impact of our course, but certainly over the first five years we've been pretty well. Um, the other thing we're challenged with is that we have a lot of people or in larger organizations, uh, large corporate organizations, but not many in smaller organizations and there's a whole space out there which actually up until recently we have not been able to really engage with partly as a result of the structure of those organizations and their recruitment patterns um, and there's a whole thing in here now about leveling the playing field field and as we have gone over the last two or three years there has been a change in our male female spillet um, and if we look at the challenges out there in the marketplace of uh, female managers we would have to say well we're not necessarily addressing that uh, through the, the, the profile of, of people we're actually recruiting onto the course. So that's definitely something to be concerned about. I think the final thing here would be, um, I think our biggest challenge maybe is our ongoing license to operate. Um, because um, was picked up earlier on, we don't always get fantastic module survey outcomes depending on what time we actually do them. Um, and we are actually a bit of an outlier in terms of where we sit within the school and how we go about doing things and with other accreditations potentially coming along, um, how well we fit might actually become a challenge for us because we are quite different to our standard suite, but we have to be different because we are looking to achieve different things. And I would hope that our standard courses would become more like us rather than us have to be dragged another way, but there we are. Thank you. Lunch.